Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. It's been a little while since we've done a hard drive teardown, and that's because once you disassemble enough, they all start looking the same. However, this hard drive is very unique, and I bet most of my audience has never seen one of these, let alone in person. There are two things that make this different from your regular consumer drive. A, it's 15 millimeters thick, which your regular laptop drive is 7 or 9.5 millimeters thick, and B, it's very, very fast. Your regular 2.5 inch hard drives are 5400 RPM, but some higher end ones like the WD Black are 7200. This, 15,000 RPM. Although not a practical speed for consumers, it's popular in the server market and has been for well over 20 years. Most people don't know that there are even 10,000 RPM drives, let alone 15,000. So taking apart one of these I feel is going to be really, really interesting. 15,000 RPM drives to minimize air resistance have tiny little platters, and that's actually why this is a 2.5 inch drive. Because A, it's really low capacity, to only 146 gigabytes, and B, like if this was in a 3.5 inch case, the platters would still be the same size. So if it fits in this, why make it bigger? Because with a 2.5 inch drive, you can fit more of them in one server. Anyway, that uh, three minutes of explanation aside, I'm going to go ahead and start taking apart this drive while I explain what has gone wrong. This was drive two of four in a RAID array in my workstation. It was my video editing scratch disk that, well, I built the array quite a while ago, but the video will have gone up actually pretty recently. And this drive still actually works. However, uh, I don't feel comfortable continuing to use it. Long story short, last night uh, I heard this really terrible, annoying vibration coming from my workstation. So. I bonked it, I bumped it around, I picked it up, I set it back down. That usually fixes any hard drive vibrations, but the noise persisted. So uh, I unlocked all my drive caddies and I started removing my drives one by one. And the third drive I removed was this one and the sound stopped. I put it in a different caddy and initially it was completely silent, so I thought the drive might be fine. But just as I was about to take it out of that second caddy and put it back in my main RAID array, it started to irregularly vibrate again. And the sound that it's making, this like high-pitched whine, makes me think it's a bearing failure, which is uh, unfortunate. Of course, having an electric motor hard drives have to have ball bearings somewhere in them, and eventually they will fail, and that is exactly what happened here. Now, it could be like an imperfection in the actual metal balls used in the bearing, or I think what it was this time is that the oil or whatever other lubricant, perhaps graphite, that they use to lubricate the bearing just wore off or uh, you know, lost some of its uh, effectiveness due to high temperatures or low temperatures actually as well. Uh, but if the bearings aren't lubricated, that of course means that there will be friction. And friction, other than just creating the terrible sound, means that you're generating heat and potentially releasing tiny little particles of metal into the drive. So the motor getting extra hot and the possibility of tiny metal bits being, you know, strewn into my drive aren't particularly attractive. If you've seen some of my more recent videos, you know that I have quite a lot of these. I have 
I think 15 of these 146 gigabyte 15K drives. So I would rather replace one of them now than go through the process of having to recover data from a dead drive later down the line. So on camera, it's a lot harder to apply force directly down onto the screws and they're screwed in pretty tight. So that's what I'm having to do. Now this drive, it's actually pretty nice. It uses all Phillips head screws. Most of them use Torx screws or, uh, you know, some other thing that you probably won't just have sitting around your house if you don't commonly do electronics repair. So it's a security measure really to keep people from getting into drives. But on server drives, if you own one of these at all in the first place, you know what you're doing. So they can just use regular Phillips head screws without worrying about, I don't know, someone's kid unscrewing the hard drive. Okay, it's out. Sorry, that last one was just particularly tricky. I think they're just filters, but there is the possibility we have a screw here and here. I thought there might be some under the label, but clearly there are not. This is actually my first time inside one of these. Yeah, it definitely feels like we have another screw somewhere. Oh, while I'm over here, that's not SATA, that's SAS. So that's another thing that makes this drive different than your regular consumer models. Let's see if I can find exactly where the screw is. This specific drive model uh, is built by Toshiba. And I'm not a big fan of Toshiba's consumer grade drives, to put it kindly. However, their server drives have proved very reliable in my experience and in the experience of many others. Okay, so there was another screw, or at least one, and okay, that makes sense. It was down through the heads and it is comically large. So, oh wow, there's actually, ow, there's actually more hidden screws than I thought. Oh, well that did it. So that was just that one last screw, so I suppose the other two are filters. Wow, these are some strong magnets holding the lid on. Whoa, it has one platter? That's crazy. From the racket this tiny drive makes, I would have thought it had more than one platter. There's like nothing in here. This thing is empty. That's crazy. Yeah, actually, this is not much better built than a regular desktop Toshiba drive. That's kind of disappointing and so why is there a QR code on the magnets? Hold up, I got, I'm gonna need to scan that really quickly. Yeah, it's um, a little too small for my phone to actually scan. So I bet if I take a high resolution photo and then, you know, take a picture of that with my phone, it would bring me to whatever. I bet that's just for like management in the factory because you're never supposed to see that. Uh, here is your main intake filter and then here is where better filters should be. These pieces of plastic do almost nothing to remove contamination. Uh, you need a good proper, you know, carbon filled filter for it to actually do anything and that's one of my biggest problems with Toshiba's desktop drives and turns out that is also a problem with their server drives. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really disappointed about this. Well, unfortunately that's about it. We just get one tiny platter and a little baby head. Yeah, I was actually expecting a lot more in here. Now we can still, of course, take off the controller board, and that is what I will do next. 
but yeah, the head is like laptop drive quality. It's not what I would expect from something that spins at 15,000 RPM. You know, the really unfortunate sad thing is, is this means that Toshiba could damn well make a seven, not, nah, I won't go for seven, a 9.5 millimeter uh, like 15,000 RPM drive because all of this hardware could fit in a taller laptop drive. However, of course, a high RPM drive requires 12 volts instead of 5 volts, which laptops don't provide, and it would overheat in a laptop, especially in like a plastic case, so it's not practical. However, just the knowledge that it could exist is going to keep me resenting the fact that it doesn't for uh, weeks. Okay, this is the last screw on our controller board. Let's see, I don't know if this is a dual port drive. I don't think it is. So here's your SAS port. Those pins are what make it different from SATA. Those give the additional connection. Here is... Yeah, that's your motor control. That's your main control. That's your ROM. That is your cache, and there's no other controller that's big enough to do proper dual ports. So I think this may in fact be a single port drive, which is fine because all my SAS uh, hardware is single port anyway. Interesting thing, so those pads. It has pads to nowhere on the motor here, and they would be about here if they were on the board. And it would be little connection pads like this if they were soldered, if they were present. So I wonder... I wonder where those would go to and what purpose those would serve. Also, I do appreciate the use of the thermal pads to go from the motor control and the main control to the case. That's, that's really nice. Yeah, unfortunately, overall, I'm pretty disappointed with this drive. I expected it to be a lot cooler inside, but I suspect that's just the quality you get with Toshiba drives. Wait, is this a magnetic lock? Yes, it is. Okay, so it does use a magnetic lock for parking the head off the platter on the load ramps. Yeah, the magnets aren't really that big. They don't need to be massive, of course, since they're moving a head that's not that big, but, you know, I still expected a little more than this. Well, that's where I'm gonna wrap up today's video. I guess I'll still put it on my shelf of cool hard drives, but maybe in the section of slightly less cool hard drives. It's just a laptop drive that's a bit thicker and has thicker walls. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. But with that downer, I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable for... Wow, okay. I hope this was enjoyable. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope to see you next time.